Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafin anbiya al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'een. Uh, welcome brothers and sisters to this session, Dawa, the Prophetic Mission. Inshallah we have a number of speakers in this session and the session will conclude with a Q&A session. So the first speaker in today's session is uh, Brother Javed Siddiqui, who is the president of ICNA. Uh, and the title of his presentation is Mission Dawa, Reach Every Household. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Can you hear me? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to welcome uh, all of you uh, to ICNA's first virtual Dawa conference الحمد لله إن شاء الله we're looking forward to this wonderful opportunity and I hope and pray that you've been really finding this these presentations, these two days of very inspiring uh, presentations by scholars, intellectuals. And this would be a, a real good segue into the theme of this convention of, and how we chose Islam, the solution in times of confusion. Brothers and sisters, what we see around us these days has become increasingly stressful on millions of people. And as Muslims in this part of the world, I think it's our obligation, it's our responsibility to share the knowledge, the teachings, the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet has laid in front of us for humanity to become successful. So in the beginning, I want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity. Brothers and sisters, in this time of pandemic, the timeless statement, the timeless words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come to life. We have all heard the statements, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, al-usri yusra, innama al-usri yusra. Indeed, there is, with difficulty comes ease. With difficulty comes ease. You know, yes, today we may be limited in our ability to physically participate, to have in-person conferences, events around the world, around the country, in our cities and communities. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the other side, he has opened the door for us to have global conferences such as these. Our ability to reach people beyond our boundaries, beyond our cities and communities have been open. And this is something that we must be very thankful for. Back in April, ICNA presented and shared the very first virtual symposium when we couldn't hold our convention in Washington, DC. We were able to invite hundreds of people from around the country, from around the world to, to really a convention and a symposium which allowed them to participate and interact and learn. So, I always remind you about the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inna ma'al usri yusra, that there is with difficulty comes ease. Brothers and sisters, studies after studies and polls after polls, I will share with you some stats which have recently been collected by different agencies, Pew is one of them, that 50% of the people who responded to some of these polls felt that 50% of the people felt that Muslims are extremists. 30, 33% would prefer not to have a masjid in their communities and towns. 130 million Americans, 130 million Americans, almost half the population of the United States, do not know a Muslim. 50% of Americans believe in fake news rhetoric. And on the flip side, on the positive side, those who know a Muslim are twice as likely to have favorable feelings about Muslims. The fact that if we are able to create these 
connections, these relationships with our neighbors, our colleagues, our uh, people in our cities and town, that can really change the impression. So looking at these stats, brothers and sisters, this becomes, this really makes the work of Dawa even more so important. In 1968, when ICNA started their work about 50 years ago, we really realized that this responsibility and this particular mission of ours is very, very important. And we build the institutions, we build the organizations such as Why Islam, Gain Peace, Embrace, and so many more. Inshallah, we'll talk more about them. But uh, we understand that this is a responsibility that we all must undertake. When you think about in today's day and world, if, if when you think about corporate America, even the sense that when organizations don't grow, when corporations don't grow, what happens? They shrink. They disappear at some point. The reason that if we are not engaged in this work of Dawa, brothers and sisters, if we are not at the forefront, if we are not taking care of ensuring that the people around us understand Islam very well, then guess what's going to happen? Gradually, our future generations will find themselves at odds, will find themselves really being pressed when it comes to some of these concepts, when it, when it comes to their belief system, when it comes to their religion. So the only way forward, brothers and sisters, is to engage in the work of Dawa. I want to take a few moments, inshallah, and just look at this religious obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You are the best of nations that was sent to mankind, that you call towards good and you stop and forbade evil, and that you believe in Allah. Brothers and sisters, this title of Khayra Umma, the best of nation, was given historically to other nations before us, the chosen people. It's not a title or a status that doesn't come, it doesn't come free. It comes with a huge responsibility, a big burden. Nations who Previous nations which really had this title and status, when they stopped acting upon this, acting upon the responsibilities, the title was taken away. And Muslims are no different. If we are not careful, if we are, we don't, we don't heed the call and we don't really take this, this, uh, this action seriously, this responsibility very seriously, this title could go away. Now, let's think about this work in a holistic way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, from the days, he has chosen the day of Friday as the best day. When it comes to month, he's chosen the month of Ramadan as the best of month. When it comes to nights, he's chosen Laylatul Qadr as the best night. When it comes to days, he has chosen the days of Arafah as one of the best days of the, of the year. When it comes to people, he's chosen prophets as the best people. And when it comes to prophets, he's chosen Ulul Azmi Min Al-Rusul, right? Those five prophets of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and finally Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As, as the as the cream of the crop. And from among those, he chose Prophet Sallallahu Now, if I were to tell you, and we all would to think, what did the Prophet Sallallahu do for his entire, his entire life of 23 years as a prophet? What was the one thing that really kept him busy, kept him engaged, kept him worried day and night? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Balligu anni walu aya. Communicate on my behalf even if you can if you're able to communicate one single verse. 
Uh, Abi Bakr radiallahu anhu, uh, he says in a famous hadith, he says, Khatabana an Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa qal fi yawm al nahri wa qal on the day of nahr uh, and said, qal fa inna dima'ukum wa amwalukum alaykum haram ka hurmati yawmikum hadha fi shahrikum hadha fi baladikum hadha ila yawm talqawna rabbakum talqawna rabbakum ala hal ballagh qalu na'am qala allahumma ashhad falyuballigh ash-shahid al-ghaib i want to take a few moments brothers and sisters i want to translate this because really the significance of these words is why we are here it is the theme of this conference is the theme of this work of dawah is is the essence and the core he sallallahu alaihi wasallam reminded us on that day he was speaking to a crowd of almost 100,000 believers strong and you have to think about the words that he's used and the message that he sent he says fa inna dima'ukum wa amwalukum alaykum haram ka hurmati yawmikum hadha your your blood and your wealth is sacred is haram is is protected has it's it's just it, this is sanctuary we should not we should not really mess with this thing this is something that's very important is very very significant protection of each other's life protection of their wealth is extremely important in our religion it is as sacred as this day that is the day of Arafah and the day of Nahr. is as sacred as this month of the Hijjah, what is, is one of the sacred months. Fi baladikum hada, in this town, the town of Makkah and its surrounding. We all understand the, the sacredness of that town, especially during the time of Hajj. Ila yawmit al And this is a this is a timeless, this is a timeless rule. And then he turns around, he says, Ala hal ballagt. Do you do you testify that I have conveyed the message? Qalu na'am. Every one of them, this hundred, the crowd of hundred thousand people said, yes, you did. Qala Allahumma shahad. At that point, the Prophet ﷺ would look to the sky and say, Ya Allah, be a witness. And then he said something very profound. And I always refer to that because that's really the, the essence of why we are engaged in this work. فَلْيُبَلِّغْ الشَّاهِدَ الْغَائِبِ فَلْيُبَلِّغْ الشَّاهِدَ الْغَائِبِ those who are present must communicate this message, must deliver this message to everyone who is not present. Brothers and sisters, if you look at the life of Sahaba Radwan Allahi they loved Makkah, they loved the city of Medina. This is where their prophet, their beloved prophet was. But we find their graves in so many parts of the world that tells you they understood the message. They understood what it meant to say, الغائب. They felt it something very personal to them that they need to leave those places where they believed, where they, where they lived and loved to all out onto the outskirts of the world to as far as they can go so that they can communicate and deliver this message of Islam. My brothers and sisters, this message is repeated in Quran in so many ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ And we have just made you a middle nation, a balanced nation, so that you are witnesses unto mankind. You see the common word here, فَلْيُبَلِّغْ الشَّاهِدْ and شُهَدَاء I'm sure that you understand the translation. You know the translation of this word. That means these are the witnesses. These are the people who, who will witness on the day of judgment when the question would be asked, did you, O nation of Muhammad, did you deliver this message? And it will be all of us having to respond and say, what have we done? Now, in just a few minutes, inshallah, I just want to quickly and briefly talk about some of the solutions. We understand this mission is pretty big. It's bigger than our lives. It will continue even inshallah when we are when we have left this world. But in order for us to really continue this mission, brothers and sisters, ICNA has taken some very concrete steps. Uh, through 
organizations and projects such as Y Islam and Gain Peace and Embrace and many others, we are able to really deliver publications, you know, books and brochures in different languages, da'wah hotlines, uh, free Quran distributions, billboards, you know, the zip code campaign, uh, the road trips, you name it. Brothers and sisters, this mission of the Prophet must never stop. And therefore, ICNA has launched this very aggressive and massive, inshallah, campaign that we would love to, inshallah, continue is by the name of reaching every household in America with the true message of Islam. This is the mission. And we need you to support this mission. And if I can just, inshallah, share just quickly my screen. Uh, let's see if I can do that. So, can you see my screen? Okay, so brothers and sisters, it's really going to come down to three steps. We all must take actions ourselves. B, we can support those who are doing that. Or C, do nothing. You get to decide which option you are going to take. ICNA has created these number of organizations. I want you to remember these, some of these links, really. Dawa.ikna.org, yislam.org, gainpeace.org. And now we are very, inshallah, very soon in the next few days, are launching our online publication, messageinternational.org, to have topics that are relevant to our, relevant to our times. So please, inshallah, make a note of these uh, links, visit them, support this work, get involved, be part of these organizations, or regardless of you, be part of it or not, just do something when it comes to da'wah. Jazakumullahu khayran, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Brother Javed. So in that, with that, we are out of time for this session. Um, one thing I would like to end with is simply to say that many people are asking the question, well, how do we do da'wah during COVID-19 uh, with lockdown, with socially distanced, what do we do? On some of the work ICNA is doing to mail out postcards to some of the remote areas in the country, try and get the message of Islam, uh, the invitation to Islam to people, and to complement those uh, mailing efforts with social media campaigns targeted to the same regions, inshallah. So I'd like to end by thanking all of the speakers for the fantastic presentations and the words of inspiration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to act on these words. Please do donate something for the work of Dawah. Please do volunteer for getting involved in some of the Dawah initiatives that are available to you.